pop, my peeps? How's it going? Today on the Monday Challenge, gonna be making a Edgar Wright style sequence. Gonna edit a sequence like Edgar Wright. This is actually something that I've done in the past, and I'll leave a couple videos down in the description below for you guys to check out. But a few of you guys have asked me how I create this sequence, how I edit it, how I shoot it, so I figured today I would go through that process step by step. Let's get it going. over to GoPro mode here so I can show you guys the setup and walk you through what I'm about to do. So the most important thing when doing an Edgar Wright cut sequence is that you want to shoot in 4K and edit in a 1080p sequence. So I'm going to be shooting in 4K, editing that in 1080 because then I can zoom in and all that stuff. Shooting on the Sony a6300, got the Sigma 30mm f1.4 and then we have the Ninja 5 going to be recording on here. So I'm doing this whole sequence to a song, that's another thing that Edgar Wright does a lot. He has things go to the beat of the music. So I'm going to shoot and edit this entire thing to a song. So in this sequence, I have little sub sequences and I have each individual shot that I need. So this is my shot list for this. I already have the song picked out so that's how I was able to create this shot list. I think that's another key important thing when you're doing this. Sound design is another really important thing. So I'm gonna be using my Rode Video Micro. I have it set up on this little kickstand, this little light stand right here. And I'm just gonna get in close to whatever I'm filming at the time so that I can get that, get that action going. shot everything's in premiere ready to go so like I said the important thing to note is that I shot this in 4k but I'm actually editing in a 1080p sequence the reason that I'm doing that is because Edgar Wright does a lot of like fast zoom in and zoom outs so I'm going to be able to keyframe those zoom in and zoom outs in premiere while I do this the first thing that I'm going to do is just piece it all together I'm not gonna animate any of those zoom in and zoom out things I'm just gonna piece it all together. I'll get that cut together. Once that's all cut together, I'll animate the zoom in, zoom outs, then do sound design, color grade, and then we'll be done. This is all cut together in Premiere. Now the next thing that I gotta do is go animate those zoom in, zoom outs. The only thing that I really have to mess with is the scale on each of these clips. I know I've basically repeated myself like three or four times when doing this, but it's really important that if you're gonna do this whole Edgar Wright style thing, you need to shoot in a higher resolution than your actual sequence is, the actual sequence that you're editing in. So for me, the highest resolution I can shoot is 4K, so that means that I'm gonna have to either edit in 2K or 1080. I'm not gonna zoom into every single one of these clips. I am gonna leave some of them just as is, some of them I'll use a zoom out just to kind of have a little bit of variation in my in my edit. Grab this first one here. I know I'm gonna wanna have it zoom in right away, so I'll just set a keyframe for my scale, then move over like a few frames, and then set it to 100. And maybe 75. 75 is probably better. And then I'm going to add a ease in to this. Yeah, I like the way that looks. Now for this next one, since it's a very similar shot, I want to have it actually zoom out. Set a keyframe, change our scale to 75 for the first position, move over a few frames, set it to 50, right click, and ease in. Yeah. And that's all that I do to animate that effect. So I'm gonna go throughout this whole entire sequence and pick the clips that I wanna add that effect to. So now that that's all done and completed, the next thing that I wanna do is add some sound design. Now while I was actually filming, I was actually recording audio as well. I think that's really important to capture the Nat sound. If you don't get the Nat sound, if you don't get what's going on in your environment, then you can use sound design or you can create Foley on your own. I sometimes will create Foley on this desk. I'll put the mic right over it and, and watch the video and create some sound design to the image that I'm seeing. It's very important to make sure that your sound design is matching what the eyes are seeing. It's just gonna, it's just another element that's going to pull the viewer into your video. So I have kind of built up my own library, I guess you would say, of sound effects, but I still use some online sources. The one that I use the most frequently is Epidemic Sounds. If you do have a subscription with Epidemic Sound, they actually have sound effects on their website. But another great website that's actually completely free, and I've been using them for years and years, is freesound.org. Just 
Quick disclaimer, video is not sponsored by either one of those companies. I really like freesound.org because there's a lot of options on there that are free for commercial use. But here's the thing, you gotta make sure that you download a file that gives you the ability to use it for commercial use that's completely free. So when you're searching for something, make sure to go into the licenses and select Creative Commons Zero. That will filter out all the options that are available free for commercial use. Something that is very common with Edgar Wright's style with those zoom in effects is, is he has like this whoosh whip sound. So I'm gonna grab a few of those, a few different ones because I don't wanna use the same exact one for every single zoom in transition. It's gonna sound a little bit more natural if the, the swooshes and whooshes and whatever you wanna call them, they have different pitches and different speeds and all that stuff. So I'm gonna grab a few of those, plop them on the timeline and build my sound design sequence. Everything's done, sequence is cut together, sound design, color grade, everything's good to go. One thing I did forget to show you guys though was this kind of headphone effect that I did to the music. All I did for the section of this sequence was I added a high pass filter to the music. Boom. Alright, let's roll it. Bing, bang, boom, baby. All right, little bit of a, a recap here, things to remember when doing this. First thing is, is you wanna make sure that you are shooting in a higher resolution than you're going to be editing in. Most cameras nowadays can shoot in 4K, so I would recommend shooting in 4K and then editing in 2K or a 1080p sequence. Editing to the music, that's another thing that Edgar Wright is, is very well known for. And it's not just the cuts that he does that for. You will notice in a couple shots, where the actions that I was doing was kind of going along to the beat of the music, like scooping the beans into the grinder. Scooping them out of the container was on the kick drum, and then dropping them into the grinder was on the snare drum. Everything's super dialed in, so I just think it's really important when you're shooting to kind of know what song you're gonna be using in post. Once you've figured out your song, it then gives you the ability to really focus on your shot list and figure out what shots are going to happen at what point in the sequence and the song. Sound design, sound design super important. I would really recommend that you are recording the sound as it's going on in its natural environment. If for whatever reason you can't do that or you forgot to do that, you can grab sound effects online or you can create your own fully. Edgar Wright does a lot of comedy films and there are a lot of satirical moments in his sequences and he's very creative with how he does visual comedy. Something that I'm not the best at but that is why I added those two little you know breaks in the sequence to give a little bit of a comedic relief. I think Adding those breaks and having a little fun with it does does make it more like an Edgar Wright style sequence as well. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button, leave a comment down below, smash that keyboard, subscribe if you aren't already, ring that bell, and stay hungry. Peace. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'm using the Ninja 5. I just I just got that. Just got that. Got a new tripod, all the stuff, bunch of bunch of new stuff. Just got a bunch there's a new light right up here. Just a bunch of new gear and that's more specifically for client work, but obviously because now I have this gear, I'm obviously going to use it for the YouTube channel. And I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a foreshadowing, not a super crazy outro today, just kind of like a hey, check this out. I'm stoked on this. But uh, this is a little bit of a foreshadowing to another piece of gear that's going to be coming very soon that I'm very stoked on. So just, uh, yeah, check that out. If you guys don't know what this is, it's a light dome for a light that is going to be coming very soon. So, boom, stoked on that. Um, yeah, Boston Bobby, I don't know where, where, he, where he is today. I think he, you know, he took the day off, took the weekend off because today is Sunday for me. For you guys, it's Monday, so I don't, I don't know where he's at. He's just uh, nowhere to be found, so. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.